So I asked the question before, I'll ask it again. How much do you know about our national heroes and what they stood for? Well, we've got uh, Mr. Paul H. Williams, writer for the Jamaica Gleaner and educator at UWE, um, to, to tell us a little bit about them. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. Morning. And happy morning. Heroes Day. Um, what was your fascination with, 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 with this, this uh, national hero and stuff? I'm always fascinated by my story, my history. And Sam Sharp is a major part of our story, my story. And so as a social historian, writer, I decided that this year I would do a series of stories, perhaps some of them not known, of our heroes. And so Sam Sharp's story is just one of four stories that have published. Yep. And, and who, who are you telling these stories to? Who you want? To I want to? every Jamaican to know about our story. Some Jamaicans are not interested in our story. And I am going to tell our story because they will have to know our story. It's a part of who we are. So Sam Sharp is significant in our scheme of things. Sam Sharp's rebellion was instrumental in precipitating the emancipation, abolition of slavery. Mm -hmm. And so who's the best person to talk about on Heroes Day and Sam Sharp? Of yes. all our heroes. So you're, you're, you're stepping out and saying of all of them, yes, Sam Sharp. the most impactful. Yes, yes. The Christmas wow. Rebellion, the Sam Sharp Rebellion, the Baptist Rebellion was very, very integral in the emancipation story. And he had some of the other heroes involved in this as well. Yes, and, but Sam Sharp wasn't alone. Sam Sharp was, was assisted by many, many other persons. Mm -hmm. But significantly, my story in the Gleaner was about Sam Sharp himself did not start the fire. Sam Sharp wanted to wait until after Christmas, after the three days break. Slaves were entitled to, enslaved Africans were entitled to three days of holidays. So Sam Sharp said, after our break is up, we will not go back to work. Mm -hmm. And so the plan was to sit down. So it was the first strike, the first labor strike in Jamaica for, for, for grassroot people, right? So Sam Sharp said, we are not going back until we are paid. He was a Baptist deacon who did not believe in slavery. He thought slavery was wrong. It was evil. So the plan was to not to go back to work. We have to be paid. But other enslaved people were not going to sit and wait. The plan was to start a fire in the trash houses. And then that would signal everybody else in Western Jamaica. How did he, how did he mobilize them? Because political events were not allowed at the time, right? right. So it was through religious ceremonies. He was, uh, he Sam Sharp was a wise man. Sam Sharp got a lot of latitude to go and preach to enslaved mm -hmm. people, to get them to, to, to Jesus, to God. I, I do not know what, what that was, perhaps. So Sam Sharp was on that bandwagon of um, taking people to Jesus. And so Sam Sharp used the time that he got to secretly plan you know? Cunning. Yes. Is it true that he made them kiss the Bible to kind of swear that... That, that perhaps was a part of the story. I, I, I wouldn't say that was actually so. Okay. But, but he was cunning. He was wise. So Sam Sharp used the time that he got to bring sinners, mm. so to speak, <laughs> to God to tell them, we are not going to put up with it anymore. As we, go ahead. We are going to stand up yeah. and break down the system. As, as a slave, uh, how... Would he have been so educated? Sam Sharp was owned by a, an attorney, a man of wealth, power, Samuel Sharp. So Sam Sharp was named Samuel Sharp because of the association he had with his owner. Okay. So Sam Sharp was exposed to newspapers, to books, to religious doctrines. He was friendly with Baptist ministers. So Sam Sharp was not just an ordinary slave. He was educated, he was well-spoken. It was very eloquent, and it was this eloquence that Sam Sharp used to mobilize everybody that he came across. And he was so instrumental in getting the plan going, but he was like, wait and see, we are not ready yet. Mm -hmm. I will tell you when. After Burchell and others are back, because Burchell went to England because he was not well. So the slaves, enslaved Africans thought that Freedom was granted, and it was being withheld by the authorities. And it is claimed that Sam Sharp was one of the persons who was going around with that so-called rumor that slavery was granted, but it was being withheld. It became a serious problem. Even the king himself had to send out a proclamation and say that, no, your, your, your freedom was not granted. But 
at the end of the day, it was granted because of the Samsha rebellion. Yep, back to his intelligence, yes. because that would have been strange. Very, because, very intelligent. Because you would have read that the, the, the slave owners would not have wanted the, the slaves to be reading stuff and to, to, to... Slaves, especially the Baptist slaves, were enlightened. And the exposure to the Bible and to other literature would have helped. Yes, in that respect, we were not... Our ancestors were not allowed to read, to do research. Right. And they could not read the English language in, in many, many respects. Right. But Sam Sharp was exposed to a lot of literature, newspaper. He was always aware of what is happening because he had access to all of that because of his religious and other association. Okay. Do you think he was <clears throat> prepared to be a martyr for this cause? I think he said he'd rather die um, this way yes, than that, live that a was, slave. Yes, that was during the aftermath. But <laughs> he wanted freedom. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't in the sense that he wanted to die for, for slavery. He wanted freedom. So that statement was made after um, Reverend Henry Bleeby spoke with him in jail while he was being waited to be hung. Oh, okay. You wow. Know? What wow. about our other heroes? Um, oh, Marcus <laughs> Garvey, I'm representing today. Mm -hmm. Right. Marcus Garvey is larger than life. Mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey is the quintessential hero. Marcus Garvey from St. Anne rose to prominence because of social injustice and racism. And so in my own personal space, I've always thought about Marcus Garvey. And then I found out recently <laughs> by my producer, Wright T. Anderson, that I would play Marcus Garvey in a documentary. And I resisted, but eventually accepted. So I'm playing Marcus Garvey. So oh. Marcus, after some shot, Marcus Garvey is my next mm -hmm. hero. But the extent of Garvey's reach go, goes way beyond Sam Sharp. Mm -hmm. Garvey influenced every civil rights leader in the United States, you know? I we're talking about the UNIA mm -hmm. and the Garvey movement. There is none other that can equal all of that. So yes, Garvey was great. Nanny, the only female in the pantheon. Nanny is a woman of indomitable fortitude. I'm saying is because I still feel the spirit of Nanny every day when I see a Jamaican woman mm -hmm. struggling great strength and, and over, overcoming redemption. Known for her leadership yes. and her strength. So, so Nani, Nani is a big part of our story. Paul Boger, yes, mm -hmm. Morant Bay Rebellion, is a classic, classic story. It, it, it comes after emancipation, but it is still a major, major story. So Paul, Paul Boger is a, is a major part of the story too. I'm not discounting George William and mm -hmm. the resident, but, but, uh, right, but I, I am closely, personally, emotionally, ancestrally <laughs> associated so with... So why have you left out the two that started our political parties? That's a very political question. <laughs> no. Because, it's a no, political question. I I, 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 they, they have done well. They have done well. They are, they are, they are the, the, the founding fathers of independent Jamaica. But there are things about Buster and Manny that I particularly didn't like. And I don't know if I want to say it on national TV that they perhaps were the ones who started this political um, division that we have now, which is called the JLP and the PNP. Why you know, you, and my, my, my story, my, my research showed that, yes, it wasn't the gun that they were using at the time, but a lot of the division was created by these two political Isn't parties. Isn't that the nature of politics, though? Me? Isn't that the nature of politics? It's the nature of politics, but, but I, am, I am not emotionally attached to, mm -hmm. to Buster and Mahmoud. Uh, no, we're not really speaking about emotional attachment this morning. We're talking about impact. So. Yeah, their, their impact was great, but um, it hasn't... I, I'm not feeling it, okay. to be honest. I'm not feeling <coughs> it. I'm really not feeling it. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. You're, okay. you're, you're the guest, so if you're not <laughs> feeling it, I guess you're, you're not feeling it. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Um, what are you going to do today? Today, I'm going back to my bed. To think about <laughs> the rebellions because I'm a rebellious person myself. Yeah. So I don't know what sort of right I'm going to carry on today. All right. Do not burn down nothing. Paul Williams, writer at the Jamaica Greener. Thanks for coming. It is indeed a pleasure. Good to have had you.